Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the day live extra. The day after Everton were given a two point deduction. Oh. John Blaine has read it all for you. He's read it all for you. So you don't have to. So if you've got any questions, John is here. Now's the time. John yeah. is here to explain. He's got his paper. He's got his pen. Notes. Notes. Been on the radio. He's done. He knows what he's talking about. So if you've got a question, if you want to know why we got the two points, if you want to know why it wasn't five points, if you want to know about half points, if you want to know about facing another charge and all, all that. and all the scary things that are getting yeah. put out there about Everton facing another charge and people getting worried about it all, this is the time to ask those questions because John's here. So, uh, John, just, just, just. What's the song that goes? This is the time. Come on, Baz, you know stuff. Anyway, go, go. So you've read the whole thing. Yeah, once. Mate. What is what's the you know the the overall the overall feel of it all? As Sean Dyche would say, we got two points deducted. Yeah. <laughs> for what it. for what particular you know? Um, generally, because that's what you want in it. The general bit mm. is, and we can start off with the general bit. It starts right at the very beginning with Everton's view of what the breach is. Right, yeah, you know how much we breach um, the PSR regulations, and right at the start of the judgment, the start of they mean to go on the Premier League um, and Everton, with Everton saying duh, 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 and we breached by six, call it sixteen point six million, yeah, mm. which is smaller than last time, of course, yeah, right, um, with the Premier League saying, oh no 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 no, we think it's uh, twenty three actually, <laughs> okay, right, and that's where you get into the the nub of the debate. Yeah. Right. Because when you go, well, hang on a minute. And, and this, the way this works, by the way, is and if you're sad enough to read this, people, right? Um, the charge is described as the complaint. Right. Mm. So if I say complaint, I re really mean the charge. Right. So, so the complaint was that we'd breached uh, fundamentally by 23 million quid. Uh, there about, you know, forget the absolute, don't, don't worry about the pence. Mm. Right. But 23 million quid. And we say it's 16. And so the Premier League say, well, why is there a difference, right? And the difference, if you're sad enough to want to know the exact number, is £6,561,000, right, between those two numbers. And the difference is because we changed our accounting policy, okay. right, which allows us to fundamentally, instead of putting stuff through the P&L, we can capitalise it, stick it on the books, amortise it, those sorts of things. And the thing that seems to have spooked the Premier League a little bit is they were aware, I think, because lots of, um, I've got it somewhere, uh, Ped, I'll, I'll check it in a minute for okay. you and we can just shows you how crazy all of this kind of stuff is and how long it's going on because we think they meet for two or three days and that's it, right? Yeah. But they knew we were going to uh, seek to capitalise um, the interest and those costs associated with the stadium for financial year 23, i.e. the actual last year, right? And that's about 19 million quid, Okay. right? So they knew that, Premier League. Mm. And they said, okay, we know about that. So we're not arguing about it just now, but we reserve the right to, you know, come back to that later. And then they asked in their complaint, why do we think it's 16 million when they think it's 23? Up to and including them claiming we said it was 23 million, mm. which we didn't. But again, we're talking about nuance here. So it depends how deep you want to go. Mm. And the reason is because we also, because we changed our accounting practices and anyone who's looked at the accounts, you, you'll be able to see that in the current accounts, we show obviously financial year 23, and we also show the numbers for financial year 22. And in some cases, the numbers for financial year 22 are not the same ones that are on company's house at the moment mm. because we've restated them, okay. which means we changed our policies around interest payments mm. and things like that. We've tried to get a more accurate view of how much the stadium is costing us. Yeah. And therefore, we've retrospectively changed it for the couple of years before and actually done it the new way for financial year 23. Okay. The couple of years before is the 6,561,000. Mm. The current most recent year is the 19 million. Premier League don't appear to have liked that. Okay. Okay, so having said we'd like to come back to it later, mm. they went through a whole process of trying to get the complaint changed, 
which is a bit like saying changing the charge. Mm. And they had two or three goes at that. And again, there's some sad bit of paper here somewhere which shows the chronology of events of, I'll find it in a minute, uh, how often it went on and how long it took and all those sorts of things. But it fundamentally went on from when we handed our accounts over on the 15th of January, right up to when the, when the, uh, the judgment started. Okay. When they got into the room to do the judgment or the, the court case, if we call it that, the judge concluded that it's all a bit messy, this, mm. right? My words, not, not what it says. It's all a bit messy, this. So um, Everton admit that they breached the regulations by 16.6 million. Yeah. So let's deal with that. Let's deal with what they admit to. Yeah. Right? And the bit they don't admit to, which the Premier League's view of basically, you can't have all that. 25 26 million quids worth of restatements and capitalize you can't have it mm. that's their view we'll deal with that later right later meaning not within the regime that they call the direct you know the uh, standard conditions of how these things are done in other words they have a case publish your results a week later and so on we don't know when that's going to take place yet okay so if we distill all that down we're not going to get another charge okay per se, right, for, 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 for this most recent round. We're going to get part two of the, the one charge that we've had, which is that we breached yeah. PSR, right? Yeah. We've admitted to breaching PSR by 16 million, right? Premier League initially said it was 23 million. If you look at all the things they've said, frankly, mate, they seem to have three different numbers that it could be, yeah? And we only have one. Mm. We say it's 16.63 million. They think it might be 23 million, it might be 35 million, it might be 40 million, and they all need to go into a huddle, have a big bun fight about um, accounting practices and policies and restating of accounts and all that sort of stuff mm. sometime in the future. If the Premier League are right, at the moment the Premier League are saying, if we're right, you've breached by 19 million more than you've just admitted to. Okay. And so when you see Mike Gow and people like that saying 35 million, mm. yeah, that's where that comes from. Okay. Um, and if you take a reasonable assumption that we didn't breach, sorry, that they win the day, say, mm. that's not a reasonable assumption, but let's say they win the day, then we'll be punished not for breaching at 16 point something, we'll get punished for breaching at 35-ish. Okay. And as we know, that will still be a low percentage in Nottingham Forest. And we know what points deduction they got. So I think our mate Stefan reckons that's going to cost us another point, say. Okay. Knowing the way it's Everton, and I don't mean that on our side, I mean on the, the way the Premier mm. League are treating us, maybe it'll be more than that. Yeah. But it can't be logically uh, a maximum of eight, can't it? Maximum of eight. We got five already, therefore, and then that was mitigated mm. down. So the worst case scenario, and I don't think it's ever going to happen, is we get another three points, but not this season. Okay. Next season. So what Evan have done there is is completely legal. Yeah. Yeah. The auditors have signed off on it. I mean, it's extraordinary that the Premier League, in their own image, um, are basically saying this is wrong. Mm. Uh, they offer an opinion of how much they think we should be able to um, amortise, if you want to call it that. So we say 19 million. They say mm, 2 million or maybe 7.5 million. But certainly not 19. Yeah. But of course, in the judgment, the detail of why they think it's 2 million or why they think it's seven and a half, and we think it's 19, and all those sorts of things. But our auditors will, if they've done their job properly, have gone through this properly back in December, January, whenever it was. And the Premier League, uh, in an interesting place, because they're basically s suggesting that our auditors' accounts aren't right. Well, if. The, if the just if that's the case, and we and we've gone back and we've audited the two years beforehand as well, they would they no they would have been audited at the time. So all our accounts up to and mm. including till June last year have all been audited. Okay. Yeah. So we've only changed we've only changed this year. No. Okay. Well, that's what my point is. If we've changed more years, then why do what, can't we go? Why can't we retrospectively go back then? And show these accounts to the Premier League and say, "Well, actually, well, we can." But, we can. Well, then, if we can do that, wouldn't that change the outcome of the previous? Well, this is where I was going to go. Okay, go on, right? Because it, 
always do the bad part first, yeah. right? The bad part would be they turn out to be right. Mm. And for whatever reason, we can't amortize as much as we said, i.e. the number we can amortize is um, less than 19. Mm. Don't forget our total amortization figure is six and a half million plus 19, so it's 25-ish, mm. right? So they'll have to confront all of that. Um, and if they're right, clearly our PSR uh, number goes up. Mm. If they're not right, our PSR number stays the same, i.e. we fail by 16.6. But we've restated our accounts mm. for previous years. Yeah. And some of those previous years are clearly in our PSR calculation now. And if we win the day, they're not, we've got our two points and that's it. Yeah. Right? But by very specific implication, that means that our accounts previously showed us making more of a PSR loss than they could have done. Yeah. Right? And maybe, just maybe someone might say, well, if you're going to be a bit silly, then we'll be a bit silly as well and say, seems to us that the, f the points we got before were too big. Yeah. But I don't think that retrospective is going to happen no. because we changed our accounting policies because we weren't allowed to do this last time. Yeah. Um, and perhaps would never have changed them, even though I think it's best practice to be what they are, mm. um, had we not failed, basically. But we still got all the daftness of, you know, in IC1, we weren't allowed to use, you know, uh, say the Ukrainian war as mitigation. And in IC2, we can. Yeah. Well, the war hasn't changed. No. <laughs> you know, so it's back around that loop again of different judges having different interpretations of the same facts. Uh, and and an emerging facts coming along each time as well. Yeah, which is the real issue, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's the thing we're all... Lack of consistency, lack of transparency. Mm. Um Premier League, you know, you know, doing adverts in political journals, mm -hmm. you know, on the day this comes out, they're, they're really trying too hard, I think, uh, and and they are crossing the line of for, for the for the wider public, i.e., non Evertonians and non Nottingham Forest fans, yeah. that there's something a bit sniffy around this, right? So, uh, Daniel South has probably got the, the 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 most important question: Do you think we should appeal or not? Absolutely. And I can assure you we will. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, guaranteed we will appeal. Unless something extraordinary happens, we will appeal. So what grounds would we appeal on then and, and what can we what could we expect if we were if we were to be successful? Zero. Yeah. Uh, we went into the case and it's it's written here. Everton had a forceful um uh, position that there were oh, in fact our KC said all roads lead to no sanction. Hmm. Now, the judge didn't actually go with that, right? Um, and, and there's a lot of subjectivity, as we know. Don't forget, the entry or the starting point is five points. Mm. So logically, we were given five points, yeah. like uh, Forrest were given six. Mm. They got two points back, which is what got them down to four. We got three points back and got us down to two. Um, but our forceful message was we shouldn't have got any at all. Yeah. So we were going in to bat again, saying we want those two points back because we don't think we should have been punished for them at all. Mm. Um, it all stands and falls, I think, the, the forcefulness of the argument. And we're talking to Sam Cuthbert tomorrow, as you probably know, the barrister, mm. and he'll give us a purely legal view. But me and Baz have had these chats offline. Um, at 16.6 .6 million, our breach is less than the money we lost from USM. Mm. If you get full value for the mitigation of USM, and I don't believe we have got full value, and I can talk about that if you want, yeah. but if we get full value for the, for the uh, USM mitigation, then we wouldn't get any points at all, mm. in my view. Yeah. Uh, well, there is, a, there, is a, there is part of this going, ra going around, I've seen around social media, about the Russian stuff and about the Premier League basically saying we should have... We should have saw this coming. We should have saw... They don't say that, but they do say things, yeah. Well, they say because of what happened in... 2014. Yeah. Because, Crimea. Yeah. Invasion of Crimea. And Russia. also because of the poisonings, wasn't it, as well? Yeah, and the Salisbury. Yeah. yeah. That we Attempted should... Attempted assassination. That there's no way we should have been effectively working with somebody who... It's dodgy. It's close. Well, I, I wasn't going to use those words. I was going to no, say... No, no, I don't mean us. We're not dodgy. The, the yeah. nation close, is dodgy. Close to... Close. A dodgy nation. Yeah. 
who, who sends out people to assassinate now, that was completely that... dismissed wasn't it as um well there's there's always a couple of things on this and and, and yes um richard kenyon i think was it richard probably yeah in his witness statement uh, refuted that quite strongly mm. um and later on in, in the judgment the judge basically takes the premier league to the cleaners and says that much of the criticism that the premier league placed on the football club is unwarranted and disproportionate and all those mm. sorts of things um but the interesting thing is w what was said in, in in the premier league's case was the fact that the light you know the flag should have went up mm. when russia invaded crimea in 2014 right um and then when they're doing attempted murder it should have gone up even more therefore you took a risk by putting all your eggs in one basket and yeah. therefore don't come whinging when sanctions bite into you the judge said no they didn't <laughs> it was quite reasonable what they did yeah um so you're right they were refuted um but but interestingly and just for a bit of anecdotal fun uh, we suspended the arrangements with usm as if they were a russian controlled organization um, and because Usmanov was sanctioned and stuff, mm. I think it was was it March twenty two? Yeah, Premier League still had a broadcast deal with Russian television yeah. until May, so people in glass houses, yeah. fatally should not throw stones. Uh, and this, we've seen this with Richard Masters when he's been in select committees and stuff. Their view of the world they think is a real one, and it's not. Mm. <laughs> you know, the, the judgment also says you should have sold player B. Right. If anyone reads this, the reference player A, player B, and player C. Right. Uh, sorry, not player B, player A. And uh, man, letters. Um, they're basically saying, "Wow, we know you sold Anthony Gordon, mm. and you sold him early, because we expected to sell him in the summer. We sold him in January. You could have sold this other player, and the other player can only be Branthwaite. Sorry, big pardon, an honor or Garner, mm. and it wouldn't be Garner if you read what it says. So they're basically saying, well, you should have sold an honor so that you can, you know, in the summer, yeah. last summer, you should have sold him so that you complied with PSR. Uh, so the Premier League and their barristers and so on, they come from a starting position of, and I mean, Baz have talked about this this morning, that you should use best endeavors not to breach PSR. In other words, depleting oh. your football yeah. team, losing football matches and all that would flow from selling your best players yeah, yeah. is secondary to complying with PSR, which is a farcical view. Mm. But we hear referees talk like that, you know, and you know, they have a very narrow view of the world. And, mm. and um, frankly, I think they've got themselves into an almighty hole. They've still not stopped digging and uh, it'll all play out. And, and I think it has the potential to get really, really dangerous. Mm. Right? Tom says, feel like the possibility of another charge. It's he's, not another charge. He's no. just, well, he's, yeah. just, well, he's just there to try and scare us into a, into not appealing. Uh, no, that's not it at all. Should... The, the judge has already said that part two will take place. So we're not avoiding part two by not appealing. Yeah. And that doesn't mean to say you can't, and we'll talk, probably talk about this with Sam tomorrow, the barrister, you can have without prejudice conversations mm. anytime you like. Yeah. You know, if the Premier League rock up and say, hey, tell you what, lads, we'll forget about that objection to the 19 million and the six and a half million and stuff, as long as you don't appeal. Mm. We'd say, put it in writing and we'll think about it. Um, I personally think no. Okay. I'd say no. We're not accepting something that's unfair no matter what the chairman or chief exec whoever it was of luton town football club said when he said it was it was um a bit lenient is that what he said apparently yeah, yeah. i was on mercy radio Merseyside this morning and they said that you know as part of the intro i think tony snell said that that's what the luton guy i think it was i think he said chairman or chairperson mm. that's not to do with him yeah. um corn says hello lads why do you why did we get 10 points in the first charge of forest got four am i missing something no you're not missing something mate first one down the track got the worst deal yeah mm -hmm. each subsequent trip to an ic or an appeal board has reduced the mm -hmm. sanction yeah um i think and i've used the phrase it might be sounding emotive but i think that uh, murray rosen for, who's the guy who decides who's judging which case i think he picked the guy who was likely to give the highest sanction uh, hence why i emotionally referred to it on the channel more than once that, that um david phillips is like a hanging judge yeah right this is the guy who's going to give the worst outcome um lest we forget um the premier league asked for 12 points yeah. in and they almost got it right which is a farce for this one they've asked for five which is crazy high in my view 
Mm. When you say crazy high, it's one or one one or two points too high, but mm. still high. Yeah. Um, and that's 17 points, which is not far short of double what you get for going into administration, which is a farce. Yeah, 17 farce. points is a disgrace. And, you know, I've talked on the channel here using the phrase line of sight, right? So, so there's line of sight for having to get no points this time, but we got two. There's line of sight for forests to be increased mm. because they've got a way with something really cute, only getting four points. Mm. Now, when it, Julia Bold did the, 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 the intro and stuff for Merseyside when I was on this morning, and, and she quite rightly used the phrase that we got half a point back for being good boys, if you like, and admitting yeah. guilt. In what world do we start talking? And this isn't against yeah. Julia, it's just what's happening. In what world do we have half a point? <clears throat> mm. You know, you, you can't have a league table that says, and Everton stayed up by half a point mm. or went down by half a point. But she's right because we got two things to get us a point back. One of those was admitting guilt, and the other one was the USM thing. Yeah. So clearly, unless they tell us what the split is, it's half each, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and there is your lack of consistency. Well, that's crazy. Because isn't it? for that half point we got for admitting guilt, mm. Forrest got a full point. Well, what's, what's crazy about that is, so just yeah. off a footballing point of view, if we were to go in and say, right, this is what they got. This is what we got, and they go right. You can have you can have a full point then. Then that would be that would be we'd be half a point within the league, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. So again, this is that to me proves once again this is a situation where non-football people are dealing with things oh. that have absolutes. Yeah, points. They're absolutes. You yeah, can't. You, you well, can't. They are full points, but they're attributed to multiple. That's what I'm saying. So, it, so yeah. they might go with the USM one. You get nothing back, but the other one you can have half a point back. Then that means we're yeah. half a point. Bet we'll be half a point better off in the Premier. So the Premier League will suddenly have to have half a point on it, unless yeah, they say they, they won't. They won't give away. No, I know, but that's that's points. stupid. Is that's just yeah. that's just stupid. They won't do it. Um, the the daft thing is, of course, that you know when you start talking about that. You, you, you start to see the inconsistencies across the judgments. Mm. And, and that's the real issue, I think, that Nottingham Forest, you know, got minus four points and they're appealing it. Mm. Um, Everton got the, you know, they asked, they asked for 12. We ended up with 10. We got that down to six. If you read this, you know, which is this latest case that came out yesterday, you talk about referencing our punishment against Nottingham Forests. This judge sets that aside yeah. and actually wants to compare our breach this time with our breach last time, you know? And on that basis, two points looks all right. Yeah. Because we failed for 19 last time and got initially yeah. 10 points. This time we failed by a little bit less, 16 mil, and we've got five points and, you know, he's mitigated down to two. So on that basis, it looks okay. Yeah. But compared to Forrest, which he's set to one side, Whoa, right? And they're still trying to untangle why we got so many points in the first place, and they don't really know. The crazy thing about that is, is, is if it was the first time, if it was a first hearing for us, then would they have compared us to Forrest? I, I, well, there's a couple of things here, isn't it? Always, as you know, a couple of things. Nottingham Forest got two points back for basically being very helpful, yeah, and admitting guilt, didn't they? Hmm. Um, and the six points was because they'd started, they being the, the, the judges or the, the judiciary, if you want to call them that, um, had a refined idea of what the right answer was. Yeah. Right? Clearly, Everton's 10 points was completely and utterly ridiculous. That had legal errors in it. There was the reference to the fact that it's more than administration and all those sorts of things. So Forrest got the benefit of that evolving understanding mm. of, of what the right answer is. They also got the benefit of... Everton have just been hit with a baseball back because they weren't, weren't helpful. So what are you going to do? You're going to be helpful. Mm. Everton got hit by a baseball back for not admitting guilt. What are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to admit guilt. So whilst we remain consistent on this channel of saying points deductions are the wrong answer, I think most people should be able to observe that had Forrest gone down the track first, they may have got hit with a baseball mm. back for not being helpful. They may have got hit by a baseball bat for not admitting guilt, and Everton would have come along the track second with a smaller uh, punishment and a more appropriate behaviour as the Premier League see it, and therefore a much lower sanction. Mm. 
Um, and therefore, you might argue, and I think there's, there's some force in an argument to say that if Everton had gone down the track second, we'd have got a smaller punishment than, yeah. than uh, Forrest did, and they got four points. And so there's at least, we've lost at least twice as many points as we should have done. <coughs> Maybe our six should really have been three. I heard, um, I was listening to Julia last night on Radio 5, She's good. She's and it good. was just with, I think you know, the people on it were just laughing or basically saying about being being cooperative for the same reason you just said it's there because straight off the bat it's basically saying if you if you if you don't Good ruffle girl. anyone's feathers we'll be nice to you and give you yeah. some points yeah. back if you don't if you don't make a big deal of this <laughs> and that straight off the bat that's saying don't defend yourself yeah that's what it's saying to me it's yeah. come in fair cop gov you've got us bang to rights and we'll come quietly instead yeah. of and because that's all he wants yeah, yeah. As, you know and that's that that yeah. can't be a way of yeah, doing yeah. things can he I mean, there's stuff in this which makes your toes curl. Go on, then give us some references um, to it. I'll else? do a couple of. I'll do a couple. Yeah, James Wallen says, surely in the appeal we argued the half points. Why did no, they? No, no, why did they think points. giving half points back was appropriate? They'd have to. They'd have to round them up and give us one point back. Imagine staying up by half a point. That is possible. That is I, impossible to gain in a normal game. I think we need. To, sorry, I think we need to be really careful. Okay. There's nothing yep. in the judgment about half points. We got one point for two different things aggregated mm, together. Okay. It's natural for people, to if you like, subjectively to say, mm. well, if it's two things, then the, you know, you get a total of a point. It must be half each. Mm. It's, not, it's not half each. It's one point for both. So you might argue okay. without one or the other, you might have not got any, right? Um, the, the bit I like, right, is this judge a little bit like our appeal judge doesn't seem to like the Premier League, right? because he can see their behaviour, right? Anyone want to read it? This one's a killer. This is great. I like this one. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Paragraph 256. Oh, that's one of my favourites. Yeah, one of your favourites. Uh, some background story. Uh, Premier League argued deeply that Everton did not cooperate. Some of their examples of co lack of cooperation were, we haven't issued press releases saying that we're guilty. Um uh, we asked them for information and they only gave us it, us it in PDF format when we wanted it in a different format, that sort of stuff, right? So eventually when he's reviewing all this, and by the way, we end up with getting told we have cooperated mm. uh, as far as the judge is concerned. The judge says in um, pa um, yeah, paragraph 256, in our view, many if not most of the criticisms leveled against the club in this respect by the Premier League are unwarranted, overstated, or both. Now, I'd love someone who's listening to type something up and say to you, what do they think this judge is saying about the Premier League when he says that? Yeah. You have criticised Everton when it was unnecessary, or you overstated the criticism, mm. or both. Yeah. And then he goes on to say... In our view, and this is the judge and his jury, if you like, the club has indeed cooperated with the Premier League in the presentation of those, these proceedings according to the standard directions, which they signed up to, all bet, all bet, all be, in a manner that protected quite properly the interests of the club. Now, the thing here is, throughout this judgment thing, the Premier League seems to think if they ask for it, you just deliver it. Mm. When they say, how much they say, and so on and so forth. When Everton say, whoa, hang on a minute, we can't do that because we've got this appeal board to deal with. Mm. Right, we'll get to you as soon as we can. Um, we want to see your accounts. We want to see them right now. Well, we'll send you the draft ones, but they've not been signed off by the auditors yet. And then when the auditors provide the sign off, they're almost identical to what we give to them. But they still rock up to this saying, we asked for them and they didn't deliver them on time. So the Premier League behave in a way where they are judge, jury, everything. Yeah. And when they snap their fingers, you should jump. Now, that's what Forrest tried to do because they've seen us hit by a baseball bat a couple of times, right? And as soon as the judgment came out for Forrest, they think, why did we let them tickle our bellies? Yeah. Because they've crapped on us anyway. Mm. And so a natural conclusion is, and without wanting to put words in the listeners or the viewers' minds, it smacks of two-faced behaviour by the Premier League. Everton were accused in IC1 as not uh, acting in the utmost good faith, right? And eventually, it took until the appeal board 
for the appeal judge to say that's not true. Mm. But we had it hanging over us for all that time. Yeah, yeah. So the Premier League accused Everton in IC1 of not acting in good faith. Let me re just say again what this judge said. Criticism levelled against the club by the Premier League is, in our opinion, unwarranted, overstated, or both. To me, that's not acting in good faith at all. Mm. So again, twice I've said it now in the first 20 minutes, half hour, people in glass houses should not throw stones. And this Premier League is in a ruddy great big glass house. Mm. And I think they need to be careful because they think they were just dealing with a small club called Everton. Then they mm. thought they were dealing with two small clubs called Everton and Nottingham Forest. And if the goddamn mainstream media or legacy media can just get some traction on this and join in with The Guardian, who, who, who have done an article today fundamentally saying people think it's rigged, mm. right? Or national radio stations who are openly saying this looks like a vendetta against Everton and that will become a vendetta against Nottingham Forest when their appeal happens and so on and so forth. Then somebody has to do... And politicians, they're all on the case... But the Premier League are sitting in their ivory tower as we speak, thinking, right then, when are we going to take Everton to this courtroom again to try and get our own way? It's madness. Well, talking of him, Richard Masters has just, well, an exclusive has just dropped in the Times at one o'clock. Chief Executive Richard Masters believes football governance bill would give a regulator unprecedented power and reduce the appeal of sport in which the country UK is a superpower. The government should leave the Premier League alone. It's the envy of the world. Standing there, you know, power stance and all that. Uh, client journalism, what a load of bollocks. Well, I don't know if that's client journalism because if Richard Masters is going to say it, then the Times, Times is a big broadsheet. I'd like to see... Who, who wrote the article? Juicy. Uh, but I'd like to see if there's any uh, comment from the Times about what Mr. Masters has said rather than just repeating oh, his It looks words. like Richard Masters wrote the article, oh, genuinely. Right. So they've given him a platform. Basically, yeah. I mean, so that's just a bit a build on the Politico advert from yesterday, isn't it? Hmm. But if the Premier League wants to take on the government, and the government, lest we forget, is not just, you know, the Tories, it's the whole of the parliament, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whole of it's the a cross-party thing, it's isn't a it? a cross-party thing. Andy Burnham's been rightly saying... Let's get a grip. Let's get a regulator mm. in as soon as we can. Or obviously, the Labour MPs in and around Liverpool have all shown their support for Everton. Um, even Tony Evans, through gritted teeth last night on Talksport, was was saying Everton have been done over here to some degree. Albeit he said we deserved it, but hey ho, um, mate, it's it's got to come to a um, a breaking point at some stage mm. because the Premier League is not bigger than the government of the United Kingdom. Do you think the worry is though that if he puts pressure on because it is an election year and we are and we're, everyone's fighting for every angle they can get there, you know, anywhere yeah. you want to come in. Yeah, yeah. If he's trying to find someone to to fi to fight his angle, someone in one of the parties to say, "Oh, okay, I'll ask you a question, Go right?" Because you're asking me one, so I just write back at you. Do you think if the Labour Party backed him, they get more more votes? Um, no. Do you think if the Tories... I don't think, they, I don't think do you, they will back anything. It's an easier one. Do you think if the Tories backed him, they get more votes? No. No, because Would they the Liberals get more... No. No, but that's the point. I think he's fishing. He is. I think he's fishing for someone to grab hold of it and go, this is something we can put in our manifesto that we won't touch My it. question, right, and, you know, if, if you ever did anything with, um, with Ned, who's on his phone over there, about if you're going to try and get a message out there, my... Um, my question to the 20 Premier League football clubs is, is Richard Masters doing that in your name? Well, that's what I'm going to say. Who's he? Who's is he, he doing what he thinks is right as the chief exec? Mm. Or is he doing that in the name of the 20 clubs? Because we need to know which Premier League clubs don't want independent regulation yeah, yeah. and which Premier League clubs are quite comfortable with it, Right. And those who don't want it, just come out and be honest about it. Stick your hand up and say, we don't want it because we think it'll end up in damage. Right? And I'll give a, a vested interest from my point of view. I think governments getting involved in sport is wickedly dangerous. Mm. Right? However, it's also wickedly dangerous to leave a monster called the Premier League doing what it wants, when it wants, where it wants, how it wants, with chief executives in and a couple of million pounds a year. 
mm. literally referring to most of his shareholders as small. Mm. Right. Back in the day, Richard, uh, sorry, Robert Elston, Everton Football Club, thought that the 1,500 hospitality members at Everton, Everton's ground on a match day were far more important than the other 35,000. Mm. And that's how he behaved. This guy does that on a grand level. Mm. The six or whatever the number is that he sees as his inner circle, he appears to demonstrate, and he, he did that with his misspeak mm. on, on small clubs, um, are more important than anyone else. And if, if we, the fa we the fans of this country, because it's our game, not his, Brian Clough got it. It's not my game. It's our game. Mm. It's for everybody. And fan activism He's writing the blue touch paper for fan activism. And I don't mean throwing tennis balls no, on no, the pitch. No. I mean saying this is our game, mm -hmm. right? And his fear is clearly, and, the, and the, the view of whoever's writing his agenda for him amongst the 20, right? Three of whom won't be in the league next year anyway, um, is that, you know, our, our cosy little world that we live in may be disrupted by something called independent regulation. Yeah. I just wonder who he's talking to there. I just, I, as I say, well, I in the Times, he's talking to I the segment that they target. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just find it strange that he, he's dang, obviously dangling the 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 rod out there. He's and, doing it because we're on channel and he knows he's yeah. getting kicked. Yeah, right? I, it's very. That's a. I think he's just trying to protect himself. Isn't it's he? quite. He's, trying to, he's it, trying, to, it's trying to protect his own job by the looks of it. Yeah, but it's quite possible that the Times asked him, what, what, "What's that Politico advert all about?" Mm. And they said, "Well, I'll tell you." Okay, there's a platform. Tell us. It could be giving him rope to hang himself. Um, I don't subscribe, so mm. you know, I won't see it. Only people who pay for it are going to see it, aren't they? Yeah. Unless you get those little websites that allow you to see stuff. <laughs> um, Alban Blade says, "I've." have lost my love for the game with yeah. all what has been going on the last few years. Used to like watching as many games as possible, looking for results that could benefit us. Can't be bothered. No. He's not wrong. Um, a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. I mean, I go, I watch Everton home and away. I very real. I pay for Sky, but I vet, mainly for Formula One and stuff like that. I, I very rarely watch matches live on TV. Mm. I don't subscribe to TNT. So if I want to go and see the Champions League tonight, I'll go down the Boozer or whatever, Green King, whoever it might be. In fact, I've got to put my local sporty bar as a Green King one. But if fans start turning off yeah. and start stop paying, yeah. or the you know the prevalence of streaming sticks and all that gets yeah, higher yeah. and higher and higher, and suddenly. Sky as a big rights holder, mm. for example, go, hang on a minute, why why is our subscriptions dropping off? So they do focus groups and they mm. ask, because it's bent, mate. You could because it's because it's we've, rigged. We know that the outcome. On that, though, we've had this discussion loads of times. You could sort half of the problems out that football fans face in one clean go, and that is to introduce a streaming platform for, for Premier League yeah. games. And that would, in a very, very quick, quick way, eradicate. So many of the problems. Monday night football, um, caught up half past twelve kickoffs could be kicked into touch very easily. Um, moving games round, the short notice could be sorted out very. Quickly. I'm not convinced by all that. Well, I, no, I'm not. I'm not saying they can. They can. I'm saying there's a there's a possibility because if you've got an all in one platform where you you. Every game can be watched, and you don't have to touch kickoff times. Why would you touch kickoff times? Why would you do, make an R twelve game when it doesn't really matter? Why would you? Why would you have a Monday night game? If you Monday night is essentially a platform for Neville and Carragher to talk about uh, yeah, what's happening. And it was weekend. invented in the United States thirty yeah, years yeah. ago. Monday night football, right? But but if you have take a simple example, if you have three games, which. This is probably true. I, I don't remember, but mm. whatever. That you have a Saturday, a Sunday, say, and a Monday game, which are the three big games. Mm. So City go top on Saturday. Liverpool go top on Sunday. Arsenal take it from both mm. of them on Monday, right? And the aggregate viewing figures for those three different games is 20 million. Because guess what? There's someone who wants to watch all three, right? Mm. But if you show them all at the same time, you can't watch all no, three no, at the same but... time. Your advertising is one third because everything's diluted mm. and so on and so on and so forth. But the compensation for that is, so I'll sort of hopefully mm. get your objection in before Go you on. do, is so much more people are going to be watching anyway mm. that actually the advertising part becomes less relevant. Yeah, yeah. So, so worldwide, you could be generating 
hundreds of millions, if not billions, a month or a quarter instead of a year, right? And that's the argument, isn't it? Mm. You, you, can you imagine that the, the streaming platform was a bit like Netflix used to be? No adverts. Yeah, yeah. No adverts at all. No worrying about tobacco. No worrying about this. No worrying about that. Mm. All you see is the live game, all the build-up in the dressing rooms, all that rubbish, right? Blah, 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 blah. And it costs you 10 quid a month. Yeah. And guess what? There's 5 billion people on the planet who are prepared to pay that per annum. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. And, and the money just goes crazy. And no. uh, when we did, went to the downtown in business thing, me and Baz, and they had the guy up on the platform talking about that. It, it's a classic, it's when, not if, isn't it? Right? That they do that. Mm. It's when, not if. But do you want this sort of regulator, which is the Premier League itself, Instead of having five billion a year to play with, we've got fifty billion to play with. Who the Premier League? Yeah. In that world, do Man City instead of turning over six hundred million turn over two billion mm. because they give all the money to the the top six or the top? No, 10 I, mean, I just I just think that it, it's that, not as simple. We're, we're not we're not talking about that, but that the point being is that there are things they can do. Oh, sorry, yes, there are things. Oh, already, yeah. they can, there's yeah, things yeah. already they can do to make the game better. They're they're making it. They're trying to make out like like they they should run it. When there's simple things like that that a regulator could come in and go, and gone, Newcastle going to Bournemouth for half twelve kickoff. No, regulator won't get involved. No, no, in but stuff what like I mean is, though, but but I think they should though, John. I yeah. think they. I think that's exactly what a regulator should be there for. No, it's not. Is to well, who who else is there to do it then? Who's the point? I'm the owner of the competition. No, but then the, the point the I'm saying. The point I'm saying is, is that and we spoke about this yesterday. Is that if you've got somebody there. Then these things straight can be sorted out from the top, not in the, on individual basis. Is what I'm saying is like we were talking about yesterday, saying that I think the Premier League missed their deadline on um, TV restructuring, uh, rescheduling. Sorry, they've missed, missed, they've missed one. They always miss it exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got in there first and a regular regulator said that can't be missed, say, and then suddenly football fans have somewhere to go with that, we can set those presents quite early on so that they're never missed. Hopefully. Because at the moment, as you're, you're a football fan, you know, you go home and away, these things can be changed, don't and you feel powerless, don't you? Well, I'm powerless right now because my uncle's coming over from Canada, uh, where he emigrated 40-odd years ago, and he's coming, obviously, for Goodison before it disappears. Mm. And it was quite convenient that the day he wants to go to the game, me and my missus are going to a wedding. Yeah. So he's going in our season tickets. Yeah. Like most weddings, it's on a Saturday. Yeah. But the game's been moved to Sunday. Yeah. So right now, my season ticket holder probably won't be going to the game because I've already promised them Promising, to my uncle yeah, and my yeah. cousin. You know, it, that sort of stuff. Mm. Now, that's a trivial inconvenience, really, because mm. my head was already in not going, right? But imagine you, I'd organised airports and yeah, hotels yeah, yeah. and stuff. That's But well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. We need to... They're the, they're the basic things football fans want. They just want to know when they're playing... And if they can go and for away games, I can book a train and that's it. I'm fine. I think that's what we've got to get. They're the basics. That the pre- see, see, my way of addressing that would be, and we can't do it now, we can't reinvent the wheel, can we? But the regulator can impose fans on the board yeah. as full board members. So there's always a, van, mm. a, a fan perspective. And they, the regulator could enforce, for example, everyone has to publish their PSR number right as an example and so on and increase transparency but mate you do not want a so-called independent regulator right interfering with the detail of what happens in sport in no no I, d- I don't want that and i'm not asking for that what i'm saying is i want somewhere i want somebody and somewhere fans can go to and actually have at the moment if you went to the premier league with your concerns just look the door would be shut and no one's letting you in mm. that, that's all i'm saying is that It'd be nice to have someone in place that a fan can go to and say, I booked this train um, and, you know, this game is supposed to be on this date and it's not. Not for every, don't get me wrong, not for every individual case, but just almost set out in the first place. These are the rules. You can't change it. And hopefully, and and if you do, like we see now with regulators. There's three ICs here and one appeal. Mm. Each of them, not all of them, but most of them, right, I've got a KC mm. as the judge, and they're completely inconsistent. Yeah. The likelihood is the independent regulator will be a lawyer, a KC. 
It's not going to be someone who has an affinity with fans. No, no, no. It'll be someone who has an affinity with commercial things going on, rights holders, the Premier League itself. Richard Masters of this world will meet with the regulator whenever he feels like mm. it. Fans won't get anywhere near that person. So, so they've got to, the regulator's responsibility should be to set the structural environment yeah. so that it's transparent and Absolutely. open. People know where they stand. But all the detail, right? will still be with the competition rights holder. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, the Premier League is owned by the 20 clubs that are mm. private business and it makes lots and lots of money, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with and all you, that. You know, and, and interfering, with, it depends again, you get into the, what your political ideals are, you know? If, if you want a nanny state type world where there's heavy involvement of mm. government or you want the opposite, then somewhere in between is, is a night nice sweet oh, spot. Oh. And, and I just think, the evidence we have so far is that the lobbying that masters mm. in the name of the Premier League and please 20 clubs, if it's you, just say, be mm. honest, all 20 of you just yeah, come out yeah. and say, yeah, we're fully behind what Richard Masters said today. Because guess what? If you don't, I'm assuming that you're not fully behind it and you need to talk to him because he's your mm. employee, right? Um, and, and that's the way it needs to go. Mm. Um, it's mad. Um, I mean, we've spent months and months and months, particularly me and Baz, debating whether the word independent in, in front of commission is legit or not. But we seem to be really comfortable with independence in front of the word regulator. Mm. And both of them are going to be the same type of animal. That's not to say they're good or they're bad. It's just going to be, as a regular fan, our expectation of an independent regulator mm. may be much higher than what is, is yeah. what's actually going to happen. I, th I, think, I think what we can all agree on is that right now it isn't working. <laughs> Ah, and, and well, it's not working for us, yeah. whoever us is. Yeah. But there's some them who it's working. Yeah, of course. For. Yeah, yeah. And if you're a, a fan of one of the top, so-called top clubs, the the treacherous six, my words, um, yeah. and so on, because only because of their Super League aspirations, um, then this doesn't touch you. Mm. What's touching us, Nottingham Forest and what I, doesn't touch yeah. you? I've listened on the radio deliberately over the last couple of days, particularly channels I wouldn't normally listen to, you know, national radio channels that just mm -hmm. talk about sport and stuff <laughs> like that. I was listening at two or three o'clock this morning, you know, and the guys had no real idea no, they don't. what all this is about. No, they don't. I mean, one of them, bless him, was saying, well, haven't they only breached by 16 million quid? Couldn't their owner just tip it in? I'm yeah. sure he can do that. You can invest in your own business, can't you? He was saying all that. He might be doing it with great irony yeah. or, or not. You know, and then, there's, you, you know, then you've got the Guardian saying, it's fan, people think it's rigged, mm -hmm. you know? I listened to Andy Townsend on the way here this morning because uh, me and Baz were having a meeting, the ex-player, and he was saying, oh, yeah, Villa are going to keep Ollie Watkins. They'll add to their squad in the summer. They'll come mm. on strong next season. They go, Andy, they've got to sell the best players. Mm. And he said, Newcastle, they've had a bit of a yeah. rough time with injuries, but again, they'll invest in this is Paul Scholes telling yeah, Baz yeah. that they can spend as much money as they want. It's not touching people whose day job is to talk about this mm. in what we call, or I call, legacy media. We know it. We live and breathe it all day, every day. But they don't. Yeah. So Andy Townsend's living in a lovely little bubble where everything's great, and isn't the transfer window going to be great? Is it passing him by, or is it, is it editorial you, you choosing? Not, no, I, is it editorial I think, choosing not to talk no, about the, the it? Which I don't think it is. I don't. I think, I think the, it's just. I think the simple fact is, John, is that a lot of a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. And there's two here. <laughs> no, you do. I, I don't. I'm, of course you do. I'm, oh, I'm just, I just, I'm just, I just take it in. I don't, yeah, it's yeah. not my, my, my knowledge. But you're I, immersed in it. Just exactly, like, the pe but like the people who watch the no problem is, is that a well. lot of these shows and a lot of these radio stations and stuff like that, it's all, it's, it's all the, it's the tip of the iceberg. So they'll get someone in, a self proclaimed expert. The type right? of channel we're talking about doesn't do anything in depth. Does no, it? no, so, but, but yeah. any, any of these people, they get, yeah. they get an expert in to talk about it. And then the, even the expert then feels like they need to go heavy on it rather than just putting the bait. Because the mm. basics can, without being, the basics can be quite boring on this stuff. Look at all that paper. Look, it's rubbish, isn't it? Look at that. I haven't read that in me. I've like, gone yeah. back to school since I read something like that. Yeah. Um, you probably haven't got highlighting pens, have you? No, I have very much <laughs> haven't got highlighting pens. But, like, you know, people, people, people need this stuff explained to them. No, not like shout, not like... This is what Everton did. This but is how leave sad it. it is, look. Yeah. yeah. But also when, when people come on and talk about it, 
Again, it's that thing of, I'm going to tell you what Everton did wrong and not tell you what Everton may have done right. And the same with Forrest, of course, as well. And it depends what angle you come from. And they want, certainly some people want the, all, all of the really, really interesting, gritty, sexy stuff and what they want to leave out the other stuff, which might be massively, massively important. So we've got now people out there who just come on here and go, you, I've seen in the comments there, you cheated. Why don't you just take it? And it's like, well, hang on. How many times do we have to explain ourselves? We know what our club did. We were there. We were marching. You know, we were marching there. We were there. Me and John were there the week after the season finished. Oh, well, out, well, outside the PNS. Numbers were a bit thin. <laughs> yeah, numbers were a bit thin. But I'll be honest, I'm very proud of myself and John for being there. So I've got no issue if numbers were thin. Uh, we were in the right. And Dave and Baz. No, no. And I'm, all the other guys. But, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, though, is this, the, it's just this... It, we know what our club did, but then turning around and going to someone who's 10 points and then going, what? What are you talking about? And then people going, like Jamie Carragher going, six feels a bit about right, doesn't it? Why? Why does it feel right? Have you? And again, is it because it was 10, so now six feels better? So if it had been six originally, would three have felt all right? It's too much noise from people who don't understand what they're talking about and haven't took a second to just immerse themselves or get the why are Everton fans moaning you just broke the rules blah 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 look at you t and you're like have you seen oh, it's just whoever's messaging you on there right you know presumably not Everton fans because we're sad enough most yeah. of us to know about all this horrible stuff right mm. we've been found guilty to something we've admitted which is a 16.6 million Mm. excess loss i.e. 16.6 mm. over the threshold over three or four years blah 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 right in the last financial year we spent 200 million pounds progressing the building of our new stadium yeah right and that 200 million pounds and all the stuff right attracted interest payments on loans and the like mm. of 19 point something million pounds our club says that that 19 point something million pounds is for the stadium. Yeah. The Premier League says, oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. That's cheating then, is it? Yeah. Mate, you've whoever got you a... are out there, is that cheating, really? One person's got an opinion yeah. on a sum of money. And, our... and that's all this is, isn't it? Mm. You go in, and it's like a court of law. You go in, you have, you have your body of evidence. They have their body of evidence. And you argue about it. And ultimately, okay... In a court, court of law, of course, you have jurors and that it, it's, you know, it. but in this, it's our argument versus their argument. And the men with the most forceful argument, not necessarily the ones who are right, get the best outcome. And what's even worse about this one is they couldn't even agree on something in the time space they had. So they said, they've said, we'll sort that out another day. But, and I think that's, that shows how stupid this whole process it does, is. It does. Like you couldn't even, lads, we've only booked a room for three days. <laughs> Z Zumba's on Thursday. And on Friday, the Methodist chairs are having a bake sale here. It shows that, to me, that's what makes it a laughing stock that they've kicked that one down the road. And now people are going, there's another charge because... The people on, I mean, we didn't understand that yesterday. We we're sitting here going, "What are you? What's Talking going about, on here?" Yeah, yeah. And we and because you got sixty pages. To exactly, read, you got and 60, it, it happened this time yesterday when we were talking, didn't it? It yeah. just to me, the whole that's what proves the whole thing is he said, she said, rather than rather than actually coming in and saying it's Evan coming in going, "No, that's for the stadium," and then Premier League going, "No, that's not for the stadium," and it's just like. The, the the fella the per, the person lady whoever's on it going on that day, I agree with that. I had a granola bar this morning. And I feel great. I'm saying Everton are in charge today. I missed me breakfast. Premier League, you're that's what well, that's all we're talking about, and we're talking about that could decide the fate of of not one Premier League team, not two Premier League teams, but the other four or five involved in the relegation fight, that's and that right. to me is the crux wrong. of the whole thing. That's the crux. It should have been walked in going, today, if we find you that you have done something wrong, is three points. If we find that you didn't do wrong, then there's no points. And that should be it. It's I, I said on, 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 on Saturday, I think, um, prior to the IC for Nottingham Forest, yeah, mm. our new Blood Brothers, of course, in this game, um, that the object of the Premier League should be for neither of the clubs to appeal. Yeah. Well, guess what? You can get further away from that because mm. both are appealing mm. and both of them are angry. Yeah. Right. And they'll never say it, will they? Either of them. But 
It's like a kangaroo course, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Right. And, and, and for those people who are saying you cheated, just suck it up, you cheat. <laughs> if you're one of the so-called, my words again, sorry, mm -hmm. the treacherous six, if they, one of them's your club, then my, high and mighty ground, you stand on my friend, mm -hmm. really. So that's cool. Well done. Mm -hmm. um, if you want football to go to the dogs because you're all right, Jack, at the moment, if you look at those six clubs, two or three of them weren't all right not so long ago. Mm. And not being all right in the future might not be so far away either. And and if if the Premier League ever gets off its bloody arse and decides what to do with Chelsea and or Manchester City, maybe the other four will think, well, there's only four of us now, mm. you know, and so on. But the reality is none of this is acceptable. None of it is seems sound to me. And, and Nottingham Forest, I wish them the best of luck in their appeal, right? Because if nothing else, they can expose how this is all wrong and then hopefully mm. Everton follow them in and Everton expose how wrong all this is. But if we're right in our interpretation of this, the second part of the case Everton have just concluded and got the judgment for won't impact this season. That's compromising the integrity of the competition. Mm. Whether we agree with points deductions or not, their own rules say we should get those points deductions in this season. Mm. So in that sense, when does this season get finalised? After Everton's part two? What happens if that's September? Yeah. October? What happens if it goes the way of Man City? No one ever knows when it's going to go. Because the Premier League's real problem now is some of this stuff's still going to be overhanging. And we know, because they're not telling the truth and the mm. Masters won't tell anyone, but everyone's expecting... City to go to court, aren't they? Yeah. In the autumn. And that's going to take months. And that's what makes the whole thing stupid is that me and Baz about this yesterday. When you what you what they could have done is simply said, over the course of this season, we'll go through Everton stuff, Forest stuff, whoever else, and whatever happens, no times involved, don't need to rush it, because whatever happens will start at the beginning of next season. Because ultimately it doesn't matter to any other club in the league because Luton Town can sit there all he wants and cry about we might not have got enough points. But at the end of the day, if Luton stay up, it'll be because of the points we got or the points Forrest got. So they'll benefit either way. They won't get relegated because we didn't get a big enough points deduction. Yeah. So we, we might get relegated yeah. because of that, but they won't. So it's got nothing to do with them. Not, we didn't not, break any rules in a year when Luton were in the Premier League. That's right. So therefore, th why should they benefit from it? Why should Luton benefit from what we did wrong last year and the year years before? So that's why, to me, I don't understand why they didn't just say, let's take the whole season to go through this. Yeah. Get it right. Get it right. Get the appeal right. Everyone, it's a, that means it's fair. It's not rushed. It doesn't hang over the last day of the season and then the next season. And this, to me, should, should have happened every single year. So Everton, they should have got what we did this charge with the first charge that should have been done last year and we should have started the season with minus whatever it is yeah. and then next season we six, yeah. next season we should start with minus two I don't understand why they f felt like they needed to rush it oh of course you do no I don't though independent regulation that's why independent regulation is, they don't want it you could still yeah I know but you're still saying we're doing what we're doing and Everton will get they this. wanted shock and awe yeah and I just and, and look what it's created they got the shock mm. they got the awe right and the hole's still getting deeper yeah I yeah. mean you know you're wrapping up but mm. you know spin all the way back to the beginning when you talked about what about those Sorry, if we've restated the accounts, does that mean we got done too much the first time? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did. What happens if someone says, we want to open that box, please? Mm -hmm. No, these minus six we got, we've accepted, said we were satisfied mm -hmm. with. Everything that's followed means we're no longer satisfied. Yeah. Now, there's no court of arbitration to go to or whatever. But as we know from the way Man City behave, mm -hmm. they go really heavy. And it, 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 I've often said particularly in commission negotiations in the past when I've been doing stuff, I don't have to do what I'm telling you I will do unless you give me the clauses I want. Mm. I just get you to believe I would. Yeah. Right? Well, Man City aren't getting points back for being nice, are they? Let's... No. <laughs> no. That's, that's all we... Um, 
Right, let's just... I want to finish off with a couple of comments. Good, good. John Crook says, What is the probability, in your opinion, that either Everton or Forrest will have points retained after the appeals process? Is there a possibility of the nightmare scenario where Everton survive by one point on the final day and then Forrest get two back after appeal and Everton get zero points back and are relegated five days after the season ends? Um, I suppose there's a scenario, except that Forrest will get... To, the the uh, appeal surely will complete before the end of the season. I think ours will be done before the uh, end of the season. Uh, if Everton wants it to, yeah. I think they'll rush it through. And I think I don't think this actually because of it the way it works is can be rushed. Mm. I uh, think whatever what they can do is do a lot offline. I think yeah. whatever happens, they'll announce both appeals at the same time. Results. Yeah. I don't see how you can do that. Because they run in series, they don't run in parallel. John, you just said it yourself. It's what? all just a big game. Well, if it's all a big game, they'll make it even more obvious. Mm. Maybe they just have to do more adverts in Politico or full yeah. full page spreads in the Times. Maybe that's what the price of Masters getting a bit of a platform is, mm. full spreads advert at the weekend. Yeah. Sunday Times, you heard it here first. If there's a Premier League advert, you know why. Yeah, absolutely. Right, thank you for everyone getting involved. I think we covered quite a lot there. Um, but we'll go over and we're going to go over some more than a game. Um, more and, of the same with and have a people. chat yeah. about uh, well Champions League isn't it Champions oh, League is yeah. back Pro- can we talk about football well, I'd love to talk about football yeah. so make sure you follow the link come and join us over on More Than A Game to talk about more actual kicking the ball can we promise just to talk about football unless the audience wants to talk yeah yeah about. I mean we'll take questions of course we'll take questions but obviously in a general football sense so follow us over there and uh, come and have a chat about the Champions League and everything else that's going on see you later